Twins fall in extra innings to the Tigers in the series finale at Target Field. We're going to break it down on today's Locked On Twins postcast. You are Locked On Twins postcast, part of Locked On Sports Minnesota, your team every day. And welcome to another edition of our Locked On Twins postcast. Today is Wednesday, May 25th. I'm the host of Locked On Twins, Nash Walker, here with writer and reporter at Access Twins, Brandon Warren. Before we get started with spring in the air and now summer, it's a time of renewal and growth personally and professionally as your small business grows. LinkedIn Jobs is here to make it easier to find the people you want to talk to faster and for free. Brandon Twins dropped the series finale to the Tigers today. Let's start with Dylan Bundy. It was very, very good in this one. That's now two starts in a row, a shortened one, albeit in Oakland, but now comes back out here and pitches very well at Target Field. Yeah, I was getting like Michael Pineda vibes from him. He doesn't have like the best peripherals, but he's going to strike out somewhere between seven and eight or so per nine. Not be great at keeping the ball in the ballpark, but not going to kill you either. And just in general, be a pretty good back rotation guy honestly for what the twins signed dylan bundy for that's more than okay and of all the things that might bother twins fans from this game granted it was the first loss in like a week uh dylan bundy's got to be pretty low on that list he did look pretty darn good 85 pitches let's see how many swinging strikes uh wow 14 so that's a pretty pretty solid effort again to diminished velocity that we've seen from him then what we've seen from him in the past Again, a P Pineda hallmark. So I'm ready to brand him as Michael Pineda too, which, um, you know, that that's not necessarily a bad thing. A majority of the season from him, we've seen the command. I mean, the command's been there. Fastball's up and into righty sliders down and away. Mixes in that curve and that change. It feels like he has command of all four of his pitches, at, at least for a majority of these starts, Brandon. Yeah, not everyone can throw 95 plus. And I don't know that the Twins really have a starter that they trust to throw that hard. I think Chris Archer can hit that, but for him to come back from thoracic outlet and do that is impressive. Dylan Bundy's not that guy. He used to be that guy. He's not that guy. So if you're spotting things, you've got a chance even at 91, 92. And again, I just, I, I'm going to hammer home this Pineda comparison. It's exactly what we saw from Michael Pineda on that second contract the twins gave him, which uh, to me was a good move. Twins load the bases. They're down 4-2 in the 10th inning. Carlos Correa looked like he got hit. Ends up not getting hit. That ball hits as bad. It's a foul ball. Michael Farmer gets him on a slider. I think Carlos Correa, I, I wanted to open this up to you, Brandon. An interesting question because there could be a lot of answers here. But let's say the bases are loaded. And the let's say the, the playing field is even. So Byron Buxton is not in the middle of a three for 45 slump or whatever. Let's say he's, you know, who he is in his median. Who do you want up at the plate on this current Twins roster with the bases loaded? Nobody out. You're down two runs. I mean, Luis Arise is probably number one and Carlos Correa number two. You know, it depends on how Larnick is swinging at that given time. I mean, he absolutely smoked a home run today. But Korea's top two Kepler in that mix. I mean, the, the guys they had up in that situation that got them to that point are the guys you want to have there. So, you know, at the end of the day, it was the right part of the lineup. It was just a wrong time. So for, for me though, arise and he, he made well on uh, slapping that ball to center. Like he did. He's absolutely untouchable right now. Um, 446 on base percentage. It's, it's crazy. He's, he seems like he's an automatic hit or uh, to get on base at any given time. And, so, yeah, Korea, Arise, you could really not go wrong. It feels like, and correct me if you disagree, it feels like with this construction and with Korea, who has the postseason experience, with Luis Arise, who it feels like is more stable and consistent than other guys, with Jorge Polanco and Byron Buxton's more up and down. But it feels like if this offense is able to get late in the season into the playoffs, Brandon, when they need big hits, when they need – you know, just contact plays to score runs. It feels like maybe more than in recent years, they're going to be able to do that. Yeah. I mean, we went through a long stretch too, where it felt like Joe Maurer came up in those spots, but there was always a base open. And so he'd get pitched around and people would be upset. He didn't expand the strike zone. And if you know, Joe Maurer at all, he's not going to do that in this instance. I mean, they've got guys like Gio Urshela who's going to go up there and he's going to give you 
the most terrifying cringe and panic inducing plate appearance, but then he might flip one over the second baseman's head and win the game for you or move a guy up. It's, it's just a totally different offensive dynamic than what we've grown accustomed to. And it's, it's different than the power dynamic, obviously that we had seen here a couple years ago, but it's really unlike anything we've seen a twins team do probably in your lifetime. And maybe even as far back as I've been watching this team, it, it's got the feel of a well-rounded team. And again, you know, people are upset they lost 4-2. Caleb Thielbar pitched himself into and out of trouble. Emilio Pagan had some warts today. At the end of the day, they took two or three. They just wrapped up a huge winning streak. It's There's there's very few things that you can get really upset about. There were some things that popped up that I think will be question marks. How, this bullpen is going to need some help at some point. But again, you, you're going to lose some. You can't win them all. White Sox, Red Sox going to get going here shortly. Rich Hill is on the mound. Can help the Twins maybe a little bit more tonight. Uh, former Twin Rich Hill, of course, going to go up against Lucas Giolito. The Twins have a five-game lead right now, Brandon. And if, if I would have told you on April 8th, on opening day, that on May 25th, the Twins would have a five-game lead in this moment for the next couple hours until that game concludes. Might be five and a half, might be four and a half. What would you have said to me? That you were wrong. I I... I was optimistic and keep in mind, I was the guy all last season saying the twins are going to be fine. The twins are going to be fine. Um, editors note they were not fine, but the, the way that they're reacting now is what I expected last season. And so how do you turn it around? You get You pick up a W when Kansas city comes to comes to play and then you go get Detroit again. I mean, this is again, that stretch where they got to win a lot more than they lose if you're going to feel good about whatever lead you have heading into June in the, in the AL central. So uh, again, I, I can't get too upset about this game, but I, the way that they've played so far to this point, 10 games over 500. I mean, if you end the season, 10 games over 500, you're 86 and 76, and that's probably a playoff team. So they have to go 500 the rest of the way to most likely make the playoffs. You have to be thrilled with that start. Joe Ryan. Added to the COVID list, unfortunately, was going to start, will not in the Kansas City series, or at least won't start the first game of it. Devin Smeltzer is going to go against Daniel Lynch tomorrow. The Twins have seen Lynch a lot, different versions of Lynch. They got on him early in Kansas City. Feels like that's mm. something they have to do again Thursday night, Brandon. Yeah, I think if they line up their bullpen against you, like a lot of teams, it's just a little tougher. You know, again, too, though, they, they got to Scott Barlow last time out, but it's it's a it's an interesting bullpen that throws pretty hard. And so, yeah, you know, we talk about seeing a pitcher twice in a short stint. This is going to be three times of Lynch in the last, I mean, what is it? Probably three, four weeks, something like that. So yeah, I, I'm curious to see how they react. I think to, you know, people got upset with how Caleb Thielbar was used in today's game. I think Rocco has to protect himself against whatever Smeltzer does. It's not a great Royals offense. Smeltzer's looked more good than bad, but He's also facing them for the second time in a very short stretch. And he was, uh, what was it, zero strikeouts last time out? So a lot of smoke and mirrors there too. So I think it all kind of comes together and you kind of see the plan where the Twins were like, yes, we really want to get this one, but we also have to protect ourselves um, against a possible short start from Smelter. Right, and Yohan Duran not used today, instead going to Trevor McGill. A decision, you know, you go and win with the stuff there in the 10th inning and – um you know, Bob there, Jamer Candelario, Harold Castro. I mean, guys, some Tigers in recent years, Victor Reyes comes to mind. I'm sure you can mm -hmm. think of some guys too who aren't going to hit homers, but when they play the Twins, hit homers. Harold Castro too today. Just kind of one of those days, Brandon, I think. Oh, yeah. uh, didn't feel late when Emilio Pagani given up that homer like it was going to be the Twins dead. It it's going to bother me now. There was a utility infielder that homered off Trevor Hildenberger, and it felt like he had the Twins number, like maybe five years ago but yeah and then too that they they pinch hit for castro uh, not jordy the, mercer no it wasn't jordy mercer sorry the dog's going nuts somebody's here at the front door. um it was uh yeah it, it's i'm your I'm dog a, knows the answer he knows the answer he's probably upset about me not knowing the answer um where were we now uh yeah i've completely lost my train of thought I, i'm trying to remember the name of this this yeah. utility infielder and it's driving me crazy that hit a homer off trevor hildenberger and now it's it's all gone he's going to let us know very very soon twins have the royals for four at target field smeltzer lynch in the opener thursday very excited for that one and, and excited for this weekend it's memorial day 
matchup here. If the Twins take three out of four, they'll be 12 games above 500. And then they have Detroit for five. So nine left on this stretch. And you just, like you said, you have to feel good 10 games over 500. Yeah, I think you absolutely do. Um, I'm still looking. It's not Dixon Machado, is it? <laughs> Again, these things, these are the things that bother me that should not. <laughs> you know, like, you know you're obscure baseball players, though. I'm always impressed. You always oh, know. It, Pete Cole, it's not any of these guys. Uh, I'll post it on Twitter. So hopefully gonna people are watching it. He's going to keep yeah. ripping it. We're Thanks so much it. for watching today. Like, subscribe, comment, Locked On Sports Minnesota. The Twins are 27 and 17. I, I think I have it right for the second day in a yes. row. Yes, yes. And Brandon, thank you so much.